we've we've been busy. We got a new update out. Let's talk about it. If you've been using Blackout Classic, you are in for a treat because the Astera integration, Stream Deck support, and encoders just hit your iPad in this great new update. If you're a Blackout Next user, there's a lot to love in this update because we've added some improvements and fixed some things. If you're not familiar with encoders and the Astera integration, check out my and Jeff's video on those, link in the description. And if you wanna find out how to update Blackout on your iPad, check out my video on that. Okay, let's get into it because there's a lot. Okay, here we are in my blackout template, and the first thing I want to show you is you can now batch patch Astera fixtures. If I go to the Astera view state by clicking here, I can actually select all the units here and do assign to patches, and it will ask me for a start fixture here. So here I have three tubes, a Titan and a Helios, and they're all 201, and that's not what I want. What I can do is select them and then do assign to patches and give them a start fixture it will automatically give them sequential patches. And now all I have to do is give it linking keys. So my linking key for universe one, which these are all in, is just one eight times. Can send that, click send data, and then boom, they're all ready to go. And if you don't believe me, here are those tubes that I just assigned to patches. You can see they are in fact 201 and 202. So if you hate hitting the enter key, but you love sorting Titan tubes, we have brought auto patch for Astera units into blackout. And just as a reminder, you can of course just assign the patch to one tube. So let's say 201 dies, I can select 202 here and assign it the patch of 201. And as another quick tip, if you have a bunch of Astera units paired to your Art7, you can use the syntax zero through home to select all your Astera units. We've also added this syntax across the command line. So I can type one through home to select all my fixtures. Or I can type 201 through home to select all the fixtures 201 and onwards. This works across the app so I can do syntax like delete look one through home, enter, and it will delete all my looks. So through home is your shortcut to select everything to the end of a list. We've also implemented filtering for Astera units. So if I go to link status, connect to Astera, and then go to the list of lights for my connected art seven, this is our filter button. And here I have my two Titans and one Helios. So I can go to a filter and add a preset and name it. We'll call it battery. And I can change my filter to be battery level and I'll keep it as less than, and let's say 96%, because I can see one of my Titan tubes is at 96 and the rest aren't. So if I save and apply that, these are my Titans that are below whatever battery percentage you put. You can get really advanced with this. You can add multiple filters in one preset so you could filter all your Titans below 50% and all your Nix bulbs that are a certain firmware, things like that. Okay, moving along, another feature I love is the ability to name sequences right from the record menu. So I can come into groups, select my battery units, click out so they turn off, and I can record a new sequence. I'll go into looks, I'll make this sequence two. I'll call it battery save. And now I can also label the sequence and I'll call that battery saver and I'll do manual values only and save that and now if I go to my fader tab look at that everything's already labeled for me and then another new amazing feature is we can finally move this fader so if I press and hold on this fader I can hit move fader and now select any one of these faders to move it to so I can move it here I can hold it again hit move fader I can go to page two and move it here. I can move it back to page one. Boom. So excited to be able to move and label faders easily. And on top of that, you can now clone sequences. So if I double click my sequence tab, and now on any of the new sequences I've created, I can hit the three dots and choose to clone it. We've also added time and delay support in table view. So here I have a really simple sequence. If I go into table view, I have my Titan tube at 100%, 3200 Kelvin. And if I go to my next look, it goes to 50% and 5,600 Kelvin. But let's say when I transition to look to, I want the color temperature to fade and the intensity to snap. I can go into time and set a one second fade just for color temperature, all right here. And now 
if I update this look, I can pop out of that view state and go to look one, and you'll see the intensity changes instantly, but my color temperature fades. So you can do some really advanced queuing this way. We have a ton of other fixes and improvements. As always, the release notes are going to be below. But for example, if you save a mapping preset, those now include your Stream Deck mappings. Encoders weren't allowing users to use CIE XY properly, so we adjusted that and made them consistent everywhere. We have improved decimal precision in all view states for parameters where it matters. We have MIDI and OSC fixes, so make sure everything works and let us know if it doesn't. We've fixed support for the iPad mini UI, and we have a lot more coming. So as always, update to the latest blackout. Let us know what you think. The full release notes are in the description below, and let me know what you'd like to see more videos on. We have a lot more coming very soon. Stay tuned.